My name is Professor Ann Zeller, and I've been studying macaques for a very long time. I'm really interested in macaques because they're one of the most widely ranging types of monkeys. They're an old world monkey, and some of them live at the very southern edge of Europe in Gibraltar and the northern fringes of Africa, and other species live in India and China, another one in Japan, and a number of species live in Southeast Asia. So they live in a huge range of habitats, and they can actually live in a wide range of altitudes as well, from 10,000 feet down to the seashore. And this means that many of them actually live in temperate zone climates where they have to deal with snow. Uh, so they're the only kind of monkey, well not the only kind, but almost the only kind of monkey that can actually do this. Now one of the reasons I am interested in this, because as an anthropologist, I'm interested in early hominids. And early hominids who were pre-linguistic had to raise their children, they had to teach them what to eat and how to deal with predators and how to be social and how to communicate and form group bonds and stuff without actually being able to talk to them. And this is the same kind of problem that a group living macaque species has because each is a small group or sometimes a larger group depending on the species and the youngsters have to learn who is who and how to communicate and how to deal with each other as well as what to eat and how to find it and how to deal with predators and how to move around the range and these guys don't talk either so they have to do it by means of a non-verbal communication system. So I think that they make a really good model for studying early hominids. Now one of the reasons, other reasons why it's really useful to look at them is because they're so adaptable. Because they range from higher altitudes to lower ones and they eat a wide variety of things, they can move out like humans and live in a much larger range of areas. Whereas one of the problems with a lot of the other kinds of species of monkeys is that they're so specialized. They can only live in a particular kind of habitat and eat a particular kind of diet. And this means that as human beings become more and more numerous, and live in a wider and wider range of the habitats on the earth, the other primates are getting squeezed out. However, in the macaques, they seem to be able to deal with it, and they can live in cities or in temples or along roadsides or in farms as well as in the forest. So they aren't as badly hurt by the incursions of human beings into their habitats. One of the other things that you'll see in this video is that macaques seem to often handle sticks and stones. And this is interesting because, of course, early hominids probably used sticks and stones as one of their first aids for food getting, maybe digging holes in the ground to get out roots or insects, something like perhaps the chimpanzees do. But here we have macaques, which are not as advanced as apes, also using sticks and stones for a variety of purposes. Another feature that's really important about these uh, monkeys is that their youngsters are very important to the group. You find that not only the mother helps to socialize the young, but the youngsters learn from all kinds of animals, from the males, from the non-maternal females, from the other infants, as well as the other sub-adults and juveniles. And so this means that they're tightly bonded to the whole group, and the whole group has a very strong social bond. <laughs> 